Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We well, thank God for how far he has helped us up to now. The theme of today's program is um, Glory of the Youth. And as we've had since morning that we've started, but one thing I want us to know is that for this glory to show forth in our lives to the fullest, we need a heart like Christ. We need a Christ-like heart to do the right things at the right time and to put to place things that are supposed to be. And I pray that as you listen, God will help us in Jesus' name. I try to reach out for you, but I fall. Sometimes you seem so close and yet so far. But I need another chance. I need to know your mercies. Just give me the strength to change with I know that I'm not all that I can be. My weakness seems to get the best of me. Yeah. 
Jesus is what I'm searching for. Full of compassion, not a wrong believe. Please hear me, Lord. Give me your help, my God. getting there. Now, if you're looking for Power Bank, place City Hoshers, place. Alright, we go into the, the penultimate uh, section now. At this point, I'm going to welcome Pastor Samuel Adini as he comes up to do his things. It's in his life. Shout hallelujah. A powerful hallelujah. You have not seen the joy of the period in your in your in your in your heart. Let's rise up now. Shout a powerful hallelujah. Are you tired? Stand up, stand up. Look at them sitting down. Stand up, youth, stand up. How many of us were here last year? Raise up your hand. Those who are here last year for this program, raise up your hand. Aha. Among those of us who are last year, that are now raise up their hand, who can tell us the topic of our study last year? Who knows it? No one. Somebody who knew it, raise up your hand and come forward. I will give you a prize. You can tell me what we studied last week. Last year, yes. Will oh, yeah, come forward? Awaken the sleeping giant in you. Awaken the sleeping giant in you. No, don't go here too. What did you learn from that uh, topic? No, you can go. Yes, come. Um, last year we were taught so many things. That as a youth, that we have so many gifts um, that has been deposited in us. That so we have to work on ourselves and make sure that our inner man receives the strength to come up and do and make use of those gifts the right way it's supposed to be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a special prize for you when I'm going. Just see me and collect that uh, book I'll give you. Let's close our eyes. 
close eyes, we don't come here to learn and forget. We are not here to entertain anybody. We are here to do serious work and get connected to our maker. So please close your eyes now. And you are going to say, Lord Jesus, you are still sleeping. Lord Jesus, wake up your talent in me so that I will not be useless in life. Pray like that in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray like that. So I will not be useless in life. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. So our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again this afternoon. We lift up your name because you are faithful. We appreciate you because you don't want us to come to this world and waste our generation. Here we are again, O oh God, before you. Because you are the author of our life. There is a purpose of our being. And Father, we come, O oh God, to wake up the God in us and be useful unto you. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Help us in the name of Jesus. For those who are sincere and serious in our life, Father, wake up that particular thing. Right from today in the mighty name of Jesus. So that our life will not be wasted in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for that prayer. For in Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Let's sit down. Uh, by the grace of God, today we are going a step further to what we studied last year. And that is where I ask the question, were you here? If you are here and you actually study with us, you didn't come for only from fear, but to be in God's presence and grow in the Lord. I feel to have built on what we study, awakening the sleeping giant in us. Today we are going to study the glory of the youth. Say after me, the glory of the youth. Say after me. Are you sleeping? The glory of the youth. That's what we are studying today. Please, I want to beg you to let every your attention be on this pulpit. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Let's open the book of Proverbs chapter 20. Let's bring out our Bible. Proverbs 20. Somebody should read for us. 20 verse 29. Yes. Somebody among us should read that portion. Yeah. The glory of young men is their strength. Great air, the splendor of the old. Okay, another version of the Bible. Another version from the words that brother just read now. If you have a different Bible apart from what the one he has, you have King James Version or any other version, read this please quickly. Uh huh. And the beauty of the old man are the gray hair. You see, from that, uh, I'm sure you have a copy of the discussion, Abby. Now, you find out that uh, from uh, the Bible uh, verse we just read now, it talked about the young man and the old man. In other words, the, the, it's the only time lag that keep them at the gap. You see, is that the glory the glory of uh, the glory of the young men is their strength and the beauty of the old men is the gray head you see there's a gap what what mean by youth who are the youth the time of life when somebody is young it's like that in your handout you see the time when somebody is young in other words we are in a progressive journey Every day, we are not growing younger. Every day, we are moving a step further in a step of life. Whether you like it or not, you are no longer the same from what you had to used to be last year. You are growing. And if you don't know, your year is progressing. And as you are progressing, you are getting older. And that is why, then, who are the youth? I said, the time of life when somebody is young the time when the young person has not yet become adult. That's a simple definition. When they are yet to become full adult, 
they are young men from all the above definitions you know that uh, the, 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 the determinant is timing timing is the determinant in other words usefulness is not static because it uh, grow, grow is involved you grow gradually a you today may not remain you tomorrow time is flying hence we one day proceed to adulthood there is no age limit to what can determine who a youth was no age limit because it is the state of mind sometimes in other words you are as old as your mind tells you look up here what, what are we saying sometimes you see old men they said i am still young because something inside of them is telling them they are still young in other words they are still agile they are still strong within you know what we are saying here and where we read the bible said the glory of the young men is in their strength and the beauty of the old men is in the gray head youth are very important let's listen to this important statement i said youth are very important in every organization society at large they are very very important because it's a stage everybody must pass through before they become old it is a bedrock of a community without the youth there will not be continuity the church cannot expand the church cannot grow without the youth society cannot grow without the youth the bible told us in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 18 to 19 he said yeah i ate i hated all my labor which are taken under the sun because i should leave it unto man unto the man that shall be after me and who know whether he shall be a wise man or a fool yet have, yet he have ruled over all my labor where i labor what is he telling us that man the writer says even though the time is drawing closer but whether i like it or not i'm going to leave this land one day a time was coming when you will grow old and you're going to leave the button onto somebody behind you and that is why the life of a youth is very very important a time is coming when you will no longer become youth when you now grow to adulthood and become a mouthful and one day you are going to depart this world and hand over your life to somebody else youth are very very important it is the primary concern of man as well as god that youth will be brought up in the way of the lord so there shall be i mean there will be a good continuity a church like this need people like you that are looking at me now because a time is coming when the old one in this church they will pass on and the young one will take over and that is why it is better for youth like us to pattern our life in the way of the lord so there will be continuity in the service of god there will be continuity in the family line there will be continuity in the society god spoke concerning abraham you see he said i throw, i know him i know abraham for god to teach the children in the way of the lord as i'm passing across to you now as this church organized a program for you now is to pass across the message of god unto us so there will be continuity the church will not be there will not be a time when the church will lack power when god will not be here god said i trust abraham for he will treat the children the way of the lord every youth heir today are product of one family or the other i'm sure you know you are a product of your own family as i'm looking at you you are from different home and you represent your family if i want to know the quality of life that is inside you it portrays the life of the family you come from the family the picture built inside of you will determine who you are you see a country cannot excel above its citizen that is you cannot grow above the society you come from the family you are will show the quality of life that you can see inside of you a church cannot be higher than the pastor that is like pastors like congregation you cannot overgrow your pastor you cannot overgrow your parents what you learn from your foundation will show the quality of life that you have so a child usually resemble their parents therefore no one can be better than the society that produces him you see we are all nigeria air isn't it 
you cannot be a product of another nation because you are from this country and what comes out of your life represent the country you come from if, if you have traveled to other country you see children of those country how they behave they cannot behave more than the product of the nation they came out from every youth that know his true identity must pattern their life to please their maker to whom all are responsible both old and young what are we saying you see, youth as you are looking at me today i want to encourage you to see yourself that god is waiting for something inside of you god is looking in unto you so that this continuity we are talking about will continue even after you you will the thing will not die with you the legacy will be given to your own children and be able to produce a christ-like product in your own life also as this church is giving you education like this teaching like this be able to pass on to somebody else so it will not die with you for a better study of today's handling we're going to divide our study to uh, seven uh, points please listen very carefully because there's a time factor for us and because you're having the uh, paper with you i will not be able to write i mean go do to, to to go into details let us see first john chapter two first john chapter two first john chapter two verse 13 to 14. yes read for us first john chapter two i write unto you aha uh -huh. i write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one i write to you little children because you have known the father i have written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning i have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of god abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one well, for, praise the lord you see the writing of the bible is not complete without mentioning the youth please i want to encourage those who are sleeping please let those brothers to stand up if you are sleeping you are going to stand up because you'll be walking around and be an usher you can't be sleeping here so those of you that are sleeping stand up and walk around so you know the devil will not cheat you praise the lord you see the writing of the bible was telling us that youth are included he said i write unto you parents i write unto you children the youth the bible is not complete without you youth usually delight in their physical strength hence they delight in showing this in public game in exercise and in exploits there are so many areas you find the youth because of the strength that they have and this strength if care is not taken can be misused do you understand can be misused and of course you see the youth in exercise like a football lawn tennis ludo boxing and wrestling and so on all the physical exercise you see the young men doing it because of the strength that they are having but may i tell you more about moral strength is mightier than physical strength you see god is telling you moral strength is mightier than physical strength when you grow morally when you grow intelligently it's better than your physical strength without the sense they must be exposed to the word of god knowledge of god in relation to the creation provision and caring love and mercy you should be respect to those areas many things are contesting for the soul of man today in fact satan has spread his tentacle everywhere in the life of the youth youth look up here what am i saying the satan has made a lot of web throughout the whole world to make sure he captured the youth and that is why a church like this must not neglect the youth because even within the internet within your phone that you are holding there are a lot of traps that are there that satan has said to lure youth into a cultic hello take off this brother stand up and walk around and you stand up yes and walk around praise the lord you see many things are contesting for the soul of man satan has spent his tentacle everywhere to catch up the youth through your phone you can be cut off through your phone you can be cut off through your phone you can be lured into iniquity 
a church like this is building up is building up so that you will be useful unto God tomorrow technology and scientific advancements has greatly catch up with the use so much that sometimes they think because of the strength they have they can dabble into a lot of things there are so many things that people like us may not know but because of the technology because of the science which you are exposed to it can good as it may be it can swear be a trap for Satan to catch up with you the whole world has become a global village exposed to internet and so on it's a trap nothing is secret in the whole world today culture moral religion most of the things that parents of our own used to be scared about to tell their children they already know it through the telephone and through the phone you are holding they already know it they are exposed to a lot of things one day my son bought me and uh, what do you call it uh, bundle the one to watch in the internet and i was browsing i just saw a website they call witchcraft so witchcraft is inside the phone they say witchcraft headquarter inside the phone ah let me see what is there see a lot of things so in other words in the phone you can be lured away you have to be very careful with your power nothing is secret again not all games are good for youth let's look up here you see there are a lot of game most of this game that you took look ordinary majority of them are not ordinary game and that is why major majority of us when you plug into those game you find that when you sleep you find yourself in different places you see not all the game game like judo judo martial art karate kung fu tarot occultic all those things are occultic game it looks like physical game i'm only telling you now all those games they are having spiritual undertone what behind it there's a power behind it and when you are a fan of looking for it or play with them you can be lured into occultic you can be lured into a lot of things not all the tv program can be watched children are you listening you see there are a lot of tv program that are dangerous for you to watch because from the watching of that tv program you can be lured into familiar spirit you can be lured into witchcraft my prayer is you not become chain of belial in the name of jesus also avoid questionable libraries questionable library or museum where you could go into clairvoyancy hypnotisis and palm reading or tarot all this i'm mentioning now i'm sure you know it voodoo systems you see there's some library today it looks like they're just reading book there are other things that are doing there now you see all this that i mentioned now they are there clairvoyancy if only if, if notice they will tell you that you can meditate how do you meditate i'm talking about they will say close your eyes blank your heart by the time you black your heart they don't think of anything when you black your heart you are bringing demon to come into your heart and they will take over anybody anywhere you go and they tell you like that run away from such a one and of course you see as a youth the tendency you may like to acquire power you say i want power i want to dominate others i want to command others all those systems you see it can lure children into go and join occult in the schools some of them go into witchcraft at a tender age some of them go into familiar spirits at a tender age because they want power to dominate others may it not be our portion in the mighty name of jesus you see i told you to avoid questionable libraries don't be your friend inviting you ask details of what they do there because you're a child of god where we read before 1 chapter 2 verse 14 the bible say we we should lay emphasis on knowing the lord knowing the law you as a youth of the lord knowing the lord is very important you should know the lord you should serve the lord point number two now the soberness is better than frivolity let us see uh first timothy chapter 4. First Timothy 4 verse 12 quickly anybody who has seen it first Timothy chapter 4 verse 12 let no man despise thy youth yes go on but be thou an example of the believers be thou an example of believer youth can you hear timothy was a young pastor like you young at a tender age he has known the lord 
right from the youth and of course he was put as a general overseer in Ephesus a young man at that he has to elect leaders he has to be a pastor general overseer for all the churches in Ephesus just at a at your own age Timothy was like that God has chosen him and invested upon his life how do you use your own power soberness is better than frivolity oh yeah read on an example of the believers in words in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity can you see now when they assess the completeness of your life christ should be reflected in you in your conduct in your conversation in the way you dress the way you comport yourself christ supposed to be seen in your life you see sober, sober minded with humility and practical holiness must be seen in our life as youth your dressing should reflect the content inside how do you dress when you leave the church how do you dress when you're in university campus how do you dress when you're going to work in the church now nobody will know a devil because we all dress to conform to, to church standard but how do you dress when you are no longer in the, in the church i told you you see jezebel we only attract help many of us have been looking for who to marry many of us you have been praying people that are coming to me they are unbeliever if you are like that what means your dress does not portray the content inside of you or that you are never a christian if you dress like an unbeliever of course unbeliever will look for you when you dress like a child of god your life will attract uh, a, a christian like you your dressing portrays who you are it shows who you are of course we can know who you are by the way you dress when a nurse come here you know who a nurse is when a policeman comes here you know what a policeman is because of what the dressing they put on how do you dress when you leave the church separation from the world very very important you see in the when you're, you're, anywhere you find yourself god expects you as a christian to separate yourself from the world the bible told us in second Corinthians chapter, chapter 6 verse 40 to 18 be not unequally you together with unbeliever separate yourself in your dressing in the way you conduct your life you see there are some things that you are doing outside the church there's something they call campus couple campus couple you go to university maybe you're looking for accommodation and you couldn't get on time a brother will say well you just tell you sister come and be living with me and you pack your load and you are living with that brother they call the campus couple these are things a christian must not be involved in yourself in if you are part of that one you are not a child of god and i want to beg of you go and separate yourself are you part of those who are indulged in drug taking or drug abuse or drug peddling some youth are being arrested in the airport daily because they involve themselves into drug many are smoking in their arms many of them are smoking uh, uh, i mean what do you call it all those cocaine you see are you involved in unholy assignment as a child of god are you involved in all unholy assignment do you allow anybody to send you on errand that will be where to send you errand where christ will not be found separation from the sinful brothers and sisters let us read uh first Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11. four Corinthians 5 11 and let somebody open to second to chapter 3 verse 2 quickly anyone you are seeing just let me know but now i have written to you i have written unto you not to keep company with anyone named a brother not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral who is sexually immoral or covetous or covetous or an idolater or idolater or a reviler or a diviner or a drunkard or a drunkard or an extortioner uh-huh not even to eat with such a person can you hear the word of god now not to even to eat with such a one are you a child of god the bible commands you specially don't company with anybody called a brother or sisters who are fornicators they are asking question there are some brother that want to marry us they are asking to have sex those people are not brothers at all they are not christian there are those people are mentioning the church. anybody that tell you that you want to marry you and do this says it's not a child of god you better go and pray your prayer again i want from such a one second to seven chapter three verse two yes
Huh? Not all have faith. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. Praise the Lord. Show you, me your friend, and I know the type of person you are. You see, the like attract life. The type of friend that you are moving with actually show the quality of life that you two are living. Because like always attract like. Drunkard, occultic, homosexual, effeminate. Effeminate are those men who are dressing like women. They put yarning in their air. They plate their air like women. The Bible called them effeminate. People like that, they are not children of God. And when you now see a sister who dress also like men, he wear trousers like men, he do everything like men, people like that should run away from. Because the Bible called them effeminate. People like that run away from a such one. The homosexual, the first internet fosters, the thief and the robbers. Thief and the robbers. I know of a story of a particular a boy. The mother will say, let's go to church. And they force the boy to the church. While the message is going on, the brother with his friend, there was a reason that happened. The brother with his friend, they now tiptoe out of the church. They went and robbed the father of one of the friends. You see, who are you moving with? If you are moving with arm robber, you become arm robber. If you are moving with thief, you become thief. Even right inside the church, the youth, some of them will run out of the church. They went and robbed their parents at home to go and steal what the parents is at because they will, Papa will be enjoying messing in the church. They went with their gang to go and rob uh, other parents. Lack of seriousness in anything you are doing. That is, partake either at home or school. You see, are you serious with what you are doing? We are in the church now. Many are busy sleeping. They are busy dozing because something inside of them wants to destroy their life. And they don't know on time. And many of them, when preacher is going on like this, preaching inside the church, you see them play with phone. They will be, will be working internet. Even inside the church, people like that, you run away from such a one because devil is working in such a life. Frivolity affects your positive uh, response onto academic pursuit and things of God. I said it plain on the phone while the message is going on either in the school or in the church, or while things like this is going on, your mind has gone somewhere else. You are thinking of other things. Devil has come such a one. Some youth that belongs to ministers, you see, some ministers or pastors' children, they, they lack seriousness. Many of them don't decide the scripture. You see them throwing stone around because devil wanted to destroy their life. May it not be a portion in the name of Jesus. Lazy ones will only become active. Whenever food is ready. So all oh, that are sleeping now. Let them bring food. They wake up and they begin to trust their neck. You see, it happens everywhere. Even in the school. Even during the classes. They will not be serious. Let them see food. Their eyes will open. They will not be dosing away. If you are such a one, you need to work upon your life. Because frivolity can lead you to useless life. Point number three now. Power of a personal influence. Let us see First Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 11. Quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 11. Speed him on his way in peace, that he may return to him, for I am expecting him with the brethren. Titus chapter 2, verse 7. Titus 2, 7. Show yourself in all respects. Uh huh. A, a model of good deed. A and model your, of good will. And in your teaching, show integrity. Can you see? Your teaching must show integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is probity. Integrity is sincerity, transparency in every area of your life. That's what we call integrity. You see, personal or I mean power of personal influence now because youth used to influence one another i remember in those days before i became a christian anytime we are going out with my friend i know there's something inside of me that like from their home anywhere going we are going out together 
And we may be going to go and greet somebody. And anytime I see there anybody preaching in the crusade, I will just cut off from them. I will go and listen. They will call me, come, come. You want to be hearing this book, this useless people that say connect, 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 connect. After they put pressure on me, I will go and join them. You see, there are some peer pressure that may influence your life. You have to be very careful. The earlier you submit your life to God, the better you discover your purpose in life. When you know your purpose in life, no friend will put pressure on you and lure you away. But rather, your life will put pressure on their life for them to, to, to bring them to the Lord. The secret of your future success depends upon your early response to God and His world. What to succeed in life? What to be an achiever in life? The earlier, the better for you to respond to God who created you. You see, there are pressure from the world around you. Friends, the peer group, society at large, film and home video, internet and all this combined, they may detect your choice in life. You see, what put pressure on you? There are some children, when they're watching television, their eyes will be there. But anytime the parents say, let us pray, they'll be dozing. There are some people here now, anytime they want to watch telly, their eyes will be open. When they want to read Bible, they will doze away. Something is wrong in your in such a life. And that's why you need to keep watch. Anytime you notice that in your life, you better go on your knee and tell go. There's a pressure of that particular thing. There are some people, it is football. When they hear football like this, they can ban church. You will not go to church. They say, no, there's a football. I can't go to tell the pastor I'm coming. Tell the, my leader I'm coming. People like that, something is wrong with your spiritual life. You must put God as number one in your life. Your choice will determine who you become. Your choice in life, as I'm talking to you now, will determine who you become in future. When I was a lecturer, I used to warn my children that you don't fail in one day. Failure started gradually, and it will build up. Those that will make it to life, you know. When you are running a race, when you say on your mark, set, go. People that will make it in life, they run fast, and they're going to make it. But those who fail, they fail gradually, and failure continue to follow them. As I'm talking to you now, watch your life. When you started your life from primary school, there are some of your friends again, you can't see again in secondary school. You want to go to university, when you get there, there are some you couldn't see again. They already drop along the line. And if you are one that has dropped, something is working against your destiny. I want to pray with you that God will rescue us today in the name of Jesus. Your choice in marriage, for instance, will determine who you become for marriage and destiny goes together. I've warned you in the teaching that your life and your destiny, your marriage, your marital life, and your success in life, and your success in your destiny, they go together. Be careful, hand over your life unto God, and God will help you in the name of Jesus. We must make our choices, and our choices will make us, and as we are warned, the Lord will, will, will guide us through in the name of Jesus. Number four, let us read Lamentation chapter 3 now. Lamentation 3, verse 27. Huh? Uh huh. It is good for a man to bear the yoke when he is a young. I can hear that young man when he came here to, to tell us how to make soap. He was telling you what he went through. He was telling you how he started. He started with nothing and was going gradually, gradually, gradually until he's, he has not reached the peak of his life. But when you look at that man, he has excelled himself among many of us. Because there are some youth, they wasted their time of the youth. They wasted their time on frivolity. They wasted their time on, their, on the nonsense. You see, as that man was teaching, I remember myself, something was telling me in those days. When I was young, something was telling me that my life, I must not serve others. I just make up my mind. I'm not going to serve others. I was working in the post office. And I was, that time they gave us a promotion to level five. I was on level three before. They jumped four and give me level five. Level five is about uh, 105 naira. 105 naira. Level three was 75 naira, 50 kobo. And I got admission. When I want to go to uh, admission that time, they called me. They said, don't go. 
You saw me promoted and become a postmaster. I just laugh. I say, post what? Postmaster. Leave that one alone. I'm going to go and read. And I went. I have no parents. I have no father. I have lost father. I was trying to, I to lean upon God. I must make it in life. When I came out of the university, I, I remember by my study, I was working. Later, I lectured for about eight, uh, eight years. Something started to me again. Your life must not remain like this. I told myself, I am resigning. They call me, why are you resigning? I said, I'm resigning because I want my life to be better. They said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the world. Something inside of me is telling me that I must not remain like this. Don't forget that you have to wake up that inside of you. You must make up your mind that your life will be better than that of your parent. If your parent is living in a receptive place now, tell yourself you can be better. And your life will be better. But many of us, we are living a mediocre life. A life that will not be prof profitable. At the tender age of your life, you must run the race we're supposed to run so that your life can be different from that of your parents. Watch your friend also. Some people will become a slave. When I was in school, I think my best study was subject was accounting. One day, the lecturer walked up to me. He said, leave the profession you are doing. Leave that profession. Come and join accounting department. I don't look at it as lecturer. Doctor, you know, Dr. Chika. No, Dr. Chika. Accountant, before they become aid, it takes time. I don't want to work under anybody. I want to be a managing director. So I pursue my goal. You see, I want to beg of you. Wake up something inside of you. Refuse to live a mediocre life. Don't think like a servant. Think like somebody on top, and you will get there in the name of Jesus. Tell yourself, I will get there. You cannot even talk. Talk your step to yourself. Tell yourself, I will get there. Amen. You are not bold enough. Say it again. Amen. I will get there. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You get the name of Jesus. It is usually good for young men to carry yoke in their youth so that their old age will be spent in peace and comfort. If you don't walk when you are young, there is a danger in future for you. Yoke of hard labor and seriousness to work and make provision for the family. Future is paramount. As a man, you must struggle when you have strength at the young age so that in your, in your later time, you can enjoy your life knowing fully that the time and tide wait for no man and the inconstancy of the world we are in today. This world will not continue forever. You see, there are some things you do not know now. I want to beg of you, wake up. There are some things I did not know. For instance, now, I know I'm going, to, I'm going to serve the Lord, but I didn't know I'm going to, when I'm going to serve the Lord. When I was doing business, do you know that uh, they call me, I don't, when they see me going to work, I can go with another car and go with another car because I have plenty. When I'm driving like this, they can pick and say, they call me and stop me and buy that car. I will carry another when I'm coming. I didn't know a time will come. A time will come your later life when your life will be limited. And that is why at your young age, make sure you become an achiever and you run the race with all your strength. The Lord will lead us there in the name of Jesus. You see, a lazy youth who indulge in playing away their time will spend their whole age in penury. Can you hear what I said now? Somebody who wastes their time in frivolity now. People are talking to you and you are rebelling. Your, your life at the end of life, the end of age, will tell you who you become. You see, a lazy youth who indulge in playing away their time will spend their time in the, the age in penury. The strength of the youth will not continue forever. It diminishes with ages, with age. Therefore, learn from an ant. Ant doesn't sleep. Without the seafood, they begin to load their houses with food. So that in the later time, we will get something. Point number five now. Ideal and the, the ideal of a clean life. You see, uh, let us read Psalm 119, verse 9. Okay, it's long. Let us read uh, Isaiah 3, verse 10. Isaiah 3, verse 10, quickly. the righteous that it shall be well with him for they shall eat the fruit of their doing read it again 
He that Say is righteous. Say to the righteous yes. that it shall be well with him, uh -huh. for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Can you see now? It shall be well with the righteous. We are expected to live a righteous life as a youth. There is no shortcut to success in life. Live a righteous life. Somebody is watching your life. Your maker is watching your life. Live a righteous life. Refrain from all deceitful tendency and situation. All the deceitful business. Don't go into it. All the time to do evil. Don't run into it. You see, never involve yourself in dubious activities. No matter how hard, how tight the situation may be. Don't run into such a one. Don't say because my parent has not enough money. No, 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 because my brother has having enough, I doesn't have enough money for you to go and join band gang. Never you do that. Try to live a righteous life. Don't say because I have no job and I need money. You go go and indulge in sexual, in sexual uh, what with a man to get money. It's wrong. You see, never you involve yourself in dubious activities. In go and join the fosters or the Yahoo Yahoo Yahu, Yahu boys. It's not for children of God. You see, wanting to live above your means simply because of others you are seeing on campus. In campus where you belong, many children are using car. And because of that, is ah, so and so using car. Let me too and go and join them. And go and join the Yahoo Yahoo boys. You are children of God. You must not be involved in that kind of a thing. Live a contented life. Somebody is monitoring your life. And it's watching your life to lead you to the destiny he has written your life with. And you will get there in the name of Jesus. You see, there are always a repercussion to all activities of man on earth. Whatever a man saw, he shall, he, shall, he, shall, he, shall, he shall receive. Maybe you don't know, life is an echo. Life is an echo. What you throw into the life, we throw back onto you. Life is an echo. And therefore, don't involve yourself in if every word acquired through unrighteous means will never last. Also, it comes with uh, evil consequences. Any evil you acquire, any money you acquire through evil, we always have a repercussion. The Bible says, Say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. And say to the wicked, it shall not be well with him. Number six now, the certainty of the day of reckoning. A day of reckoning is coming. A day of accountability is coming. A day is coming when you are going to stand before your maker. A day is coming when you are going to give account of your still worship. Let us see Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Second Corinthians 5, verse 10. Quickly, anybody who has seen it? Aha. Uh -huh. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. A day is coming when we are going to appear alone. A day when your parents will not stand for you. A day when your wife will not stand for you. A day when they ask you how long do you spend in the world, you will not even remember how many days again. A day is coming. You are going to give account, detail of your life, both secret and public. We are going to give account. You have only one life to live. Only one. Only one life to live. I used to tell people, if you are 70 years old, you only spend 23,500 days on heart. That's all. Because God, can't, God only counts our days. It's not your years. 70 years is 22,500 days. And let's be careful. Because as you are growing old, how old are you now? Multiply by 365. You see how many days you are spent. You, no purgatory exists anywhere. That is, there's no place. After you are your death in this world, they call purgatory. A game of purgatory. They, they are going to purge you before you get to heaven. There's nobody like that. No incarnation. No reincarnation. No reformation anywhere. But God's judgment. The Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says, if the appointed of man wants to die, after that judgment. The reality of the fact that we will all give account unto God for all our activities on earth. Detailed record of your life is being recorded. Even as you are here now, there is something recording your life. Even what is going in your mind is uh, telling God every second. Even the book of Proverbs where we read today. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The Bible says, the spirit of man 
is the lamp of God. Your spirit is the lamp of God. The spirit inside of you cannot lie. That spirit is telling God, detail about your life unto God. Anytime you are laughing, but there's bitterness in your heart, he's telling God. Anytime you are stealing and you are defending lie, he's telling God the truth. Therefore, be very careful. There's something inside of you that can never lie. The spirit inside of you belongs to God and is telling God detail about your life. You see, time does not remove sin. Time does not take away sin. You cannot say, oh, I committed that sin many, many years back. Any sin that is unrepented is still waiting for God's judgment. The Father shall not stand for the, uh, for the sin of uh, the Son. Everybody will stand for his consequences. There is nothing secret in the eyes of God. Everything you cover up, there already is scandal in heaven. What you are covering up now, they must not know. They must not know. They must not know. It's already a scandal in heaven because it's exposed in heaven right now. The Bible says, let hand join to hand. Sinner will not go unpunished. I want to beg you this, uh, this uh, afternoon, beloved, check your life because a day is coming. Even though we are young today, even though we are young, we are tender, but as you are growing old, you are making progress. All the details about your life, God is recording it. The day you run away from the house and you go and sleep with a man, it has been still recorded against you. The earlier you repented of your sin and turned to God, the better for you. But remember, whoever lives a life devoid of Jesus Christ in this life will spend their eternity in hellfire. You see, people were telling, you take up Jesus, beg they take Jesus into your life. They said they have no time. They are still young. But when the time of death comes, they have time to die. But when you die, the Bible tells us it's judgment. I'm going to give account of every detail before the point number seven now. God expectation for us. Let us read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Yes, quickly. 12, 1, before we run off. Remember now thy creator in the day of your youth. While the evil days come not, Aha. nor the years draw near. Can you see? When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in, in them. them. Remember the Lord in the day of your youth. God is pleading unto you now. You need to remember the Lord. Where do you put God in your life? Everyone is crying. Everyone is weeping. Everyone is waiting patiently for that sister. Everyone is waiting patiently for that brother. How long will God wait for you? How long? I pray you will not lose the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus. As I'm talking to you now, examine yourself. The Bible says, remember the Lord in the day of thy youth. Forsake all the works of darkness that are still manifesting in your life. I'm sure you all know the work of darkness. All the secret girlfriend, secret friend, all the masturbation, all the lying. Whether you call it public or, 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 or secret lying or, 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 or technical lying. You see, God is watching. A liar will never escape God's judgment. Are you involved in boyfriend and girlfriend? Are you involved in occultism? Stealing from God? Girlfriend and boyfriend, drunkenness, effeminate, I've seen it before. What are down the word of God that some of us now, as they are hearing the word from the pulpit now, they just water down the word of God and say, No, it cannot be. God cannot be wicked. God cannot punish the sinner like that. God that loves mankind. Because, but let me tell you, the Bible tells us today, our God is a God of love. But after you close your eyes in this world, the same Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. A day is coming when God will turn back unto many who refuse the word of God. Your life is important to God. You are sent here to accomplish your own purpose on earth. You cannot live your own life because God that created you, he has shared his life for you, and you must not live your own life, but the life of that God. And God is waiting for you, my son, my daughter. Will you perish? Will you go into destruction? You, will you live a wasted life? Even though there's strength now, I can decide who to serve. I can decide where to go. I can decide who to, who, who, where to, who to choose. But may I tell you, if you reject Jesus, you are going towards perdition. May you not be approaching the name of Jesus. Let's bow, bow our head now and go to God in prayer. Bow your head. You want to go into prayer right now. I want to keep your hand down very well. When you get back, come read it yourself. Prayerfully, the Lord will still minister to you. Wherever you are, bow down your head. Everybody, bow down your head. You see the glory of the youth. How are you using your own glory? Bow down your head and close your eyes very well. I want everybody to close his eye. I want the ushers also to pray. Everybody to pray and say, You are going to pray, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. 
do not allow me to live a wasted life. Pray like that in the name of Jesus. Pray like that. Everybody continue to pray. Everybody close your eyes and begin to pray. I don't want to live a wasted life. I don't want to waste my strength on this life. I don't want the devil to avenge my soul. Everybody bow your head. Everybody close your eyes. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Close your eyes. Bow your head. I want to pray with some people right now. Are you here today? You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to serve a better master. You want him to plan your life for you. Whatever you are, please raise up your hand. I want to pray with you quickly before we go. Raise up your hand now. God bless you as you do so. God bless you. Raise up your hand. You want to give your life to Jesus. God bless you, my brother. I'm still waiting for others. Close your eyes. You don't need to look at anybody. God bless you, my brother, my sister. All those who raise up their hand, quickly just say,